My husband was dying and I came up with phage therapy as this idea and I wrote the doctor Chip Schooley and said, you know, what do you think about this? He, he thought that it was going to be an interesting idea, but he also said, well, if you can find phages that can match his bacteria, I'll call the FDA and see if we can get approval for compassionate use. And that really basically means when somebody is dying and there's no alternatives left. And it didn't take much convincing in a way because the doctors already knew that they didn't have anything left in their arsenal to kill this organism. And, um, but it was interesting because when Chip contacted the FDA, he thought that he was gonna have to present all of this data on what phage was, and he went back to the literature himself and brushed up on it because it isn't something that, you know, it, we all learn about. And, uh, but the FDA knew all about phage therapy. They were actually looking for an opportunity to gather more data so that they could kind of make informed decisions. And um, so they said, you know, we will give you this compassionate use, but you have to make sure that the amount of endotoxin, which is kind of like the debris that um, the bacterial and, and environmental debris that is in the sample is below a certain threshold because that itself could cause septic shock. And nobody knew what that threshold really was. But Chip was talking to experts by now, as was I. And it was pretty clear that because he was fully colonized with this bacteria that we were going to need to treat him intravenously. And that was what one of the real innovations in this case was.